Hey there, it's Erin with Time Saving Templates and today I'm going to go over a sample demonstration of the turnover report template that I have listed at my shop timesavingtemplates.com. So you'll see uh, when you first get it, it's going to be uh, blank except for all of these cells have formulas. So you'll see there's a page for an overall summary, a detailed summary, and then these other tabs right here are where you would enter several different reports that you can hopefully get from your HRIS or uh, payroll system. But before I go into that, I just wanted to mention that the way the overall versus detail summary works is, uh, you know, whether you call it a functional area or a region or a district or anything like that, just know that the, the overall summary is going to be good for 20 different departments or areas that, um, that you would break up like the main areas in the company. And then the detailed summary takes each of those 20 areas and breaks it down into 20 uh, further cost centers or departments or districts within each area. So, and, and then on the detailed summary, you just keep scrolling down. So each main um, region has um, a section to put more detailed cost centers or um, you can change how it's worded if you want it to just say department. You can edit that part at the top. So whatever makes sense for you. And so for getting started, this review tab isn't gonna make sense until you put in your employee information into these other reports and that that way you can copy and paste the data into this template so starting with the previous employee list in the current employee list this is going to be a list of all active employees as of a particular date so um, you'll need to decide what kind of time frame you want to use for the turnover report are you looking at a monthly turnover rate or do you want to look at an annual turnover rate? So if you're going to go with a monthly turnover report, then the current employee list is going to be the active employee list as of the end of the month. So uh, January 31st or whichever month you're in. And then the previous employee list is uh, the active employees as of the beginning of the month. So January 1st. Now, if you're doing an annual time frame, then December 31st would be the current employee list, and going back to January 1st would be previous employee list. And so you'll need to determine which you're going to use. And also for the transfer report, the new hires, and your terminations, both voluntary and involuntary, you'll be pulling you know, all transfers that occurred during the month or all transfers that occurred during the year. But whichever time frame you choose, you just need to be consistent with all of the reports and the active employee list. The main things that you need are the headers that are highlighted green, ID, the functional area or department, and then the department or cost center. The Functional area or department is going to be the big uh, overall summary, whatever you would put in here. And then the department or cost center is the more detailed district or, or cost center number. And I have some other columns here to the right that are just there if you want to have that. Before I move on to the others, let me just copy in my sample data because it'll, it'll help make more sense. And so you would just copy and paste your data into the worksheet. And this is just going to help get your counts per department. The transfer report, so you would just get your transfer report. Hopefully you can get something that has like their previous department, their new department, previous region, new region. Then paste that into um, this part. Now we move on to new hires. Let me grab the sample data. And then you're just going to paste in the employee, what they hired in at, what region or area they hired in at, and then what department or cost center they hired in at. And moving on, terminations, and I copy and paste the voluntary. Now I'm going to 
copy and paste the involuntary. Now we have pasted information into all of these pages. Now we can start to make sense of things. If you go to the review page, this should populate, but you'll have anytime you enter new information, you'll have to do a data refresh all. And now it's going to populate. And what this means is that in these two are the previous employee list and these are the current employee list and it's listing out which depart which of the detailed departments are falling under each overall main functional area that's just to help you know what to put in here because you'll see nothing's happened yet in the overall or detailed summary and that's just because the last step left is to enter in the departments that you want to track. So for here, you could either type it in if you know what it is, and then as you put it in column A, it's going to populate the rest of the cells. You have a lot to do. You can come back to the review tab, just copy this. It should be the same uh, for the main areas, and then paste. So those are the overall, and then for the detailed summary, you could set it up. Let's see, start with finance. So the first section will change that to finance. And with finance, we have, these are the cost centers and this is the headcount. So be sure that you're copying in the actual cost center and not the headcount. And those belong in the finance. So we'll just paste them here. And then it pulls in the data from the others. And then if you scroll down, let's see, the next one is North. So change this to North. And then I'm gonna grab the department numbers for North. Copy, Control C, and paste, Control V. And then that's how you set it up. You might wanna do a blank template that has all the department numbers here and then that way you don't have to repeat that part if you're doing it every month. If you are not using all 20, you could also highlight those, right click and hide. Now that we have the data and hopefully it's starting to make more sense, um, I just wanted to go over what these numbers mean and some ways you can double check. So beginning headcount plus the hires plus transfers in minus transfers out minus total terminations equals the ending headcount. Now, that's what this ending headcount number is gonna give you, but there's also an another way to double check it, and you'll see this is highlighted double check right here, because we're also looking at the current employee list that you pasted in, and we're checking what is the headcount number for that specific department number 39. So that means that you might need to research further to see what happened there. If there was a difference in the time frame of the report, that could happen if data is entered like ahead of time of someone being transferred. The chart that you'll see there was, this is the 20 main departments. So you'll see there's were extra that we hadn't filled out yet. And it'll show uh, the involuntary percentage and then the voluntary percentage of turnover kind of as a comparison. And then the chart at the bottom is also showing kind of the same thing, the department and then the orange is the voluntary, the blue is the involuntary, and the gray is the total turnover percentage. So I hope that helps with uh, how you're going to report your turnover. And again, if you're um, if you don't have a copy of this template, you can find it at timesavingtemplates.com and look for the human resources compensation section. Um, and I also have a free compensation metrics cheat sheet um, if that's something you're interested in. Uh, you can download that for free. I'll add the link in the comments. And until next time, don't forget that I'm here to help you streamline and save time when it comes to using Excel worksheets. Thanks.